Rub up your engines! Duh, Faye says. Scotty, my car consumes much more gas than it did in the past, though there's nothing evidently wrong with it. What could possibly be the reasons? Okay, simple things first. Change your air filter. Change your fuel filter. Change the spark plugs. Have a guy professionally clean your fuel injectors if that doesn't help, because we have pressure machines that can clean the fuel injectors. Dirty fuel injectors will do that. Now, there is stuff you can clean yourself. I have a video called... Make your car run better with this little spray cleaner. Watch that, and you can get two cans of spray cleaner for about 14 bucks total. You can clean the throttle. You can clean the mass airflow sensor. You can do all that stuff, and a lot of times that'll fix it because things do get dirty over time, and with modern cars being all computer run, a lot of people just keep driving them because they still run good, but they'll get a little bit worse fast mileage because things are dirty and they need cleaning. Joe Eckert says, Scotty, what do you think about running Amsol Signature Oil for one year or 20,000 miles? The one year, I don't mind but I wouldn't push it to 20,000 miles. I got a whole video on that, the myth of the 20,000 mile oil change, and it talked about that new Mobile One one that they said they could last 20,000 miles. Unless you're like a truck driver, and you're driving 65 miles an hour for 12 hours a day, and that 20,000 miles is all highway driving in a year or less, don't do it. If you drive on a highway at 65 miles an hour, the wear on your engine oil is like 10% of what is in city stop and go traffic. 20,000 miles on a highway, going 65 is equivalent to like 2,000 miles in the city, so it's no big deal. But don't do it with stop and go city driving. It's not worth it. I don't care what the engineers say here or there. And most cars are going to burn oil at that kind of mileage. You don't want to wear an engine out for something dumb like that. But once a year, if you drive less than 10,000 miles, go right ahead. AG says, what do you think about a 2015 Audi A8 with a V6 3.0 supercharged engine? I just bought one, and I love it. Yeah, they're fun to drive. That thing is zippy as can be. But get a hold of me in five or six years if you still have the car, because you'll probably hate it then. Every customer that I had buy one of those things, if they put any serious amount of mileage on it, 80, 90,000 or more miles, they threw so much money into those vehicles, and then when they tried to sell them used, they found out that a seven, eight-year-old one went for almost nothing because of that. But they are fun to drive. I'll give them that. The Germans have interesting technology, you know? They make top-of-the-line stuff in the short run. <laughs> Leo Marino, 654213. There must be a lot of Leo Marinos out there, huh? Scotty, I'm 16. I'm getting my driver's license soon. I want to buy a 1993 Toyota Celica GT5 Speed Manual so I can learn how to drive. I want to keep it on weekends. What do you think? Not a bad idea. My son's got one of those things for 500 bucks ages ago because one of my customers loaned hers to her daughter, who was not exactly someone who took care of vehicles. She drove over a manhole cover during the flood, and the water came shooting out flood it out and suck water and blew the engine so I bought it for 500 bought a engine for 400 put it in and he drives it around they're very good cars but you have to understand it's a 93 a 27 year old car man that's an old car so don't pay much for it and see how much work it needs before you buy one. Make sure it runs and shifts and everything. Body stuff you can always fix, but if the engine or tranny is going out you don't want to mess with it. Canadian Frost says Scotty got a 1973 VW Super Beetle it's stuck in gear. Any easy fixes? What you want to do is jack it up in the air, get to the transmission, the shifter linkage, and try to manually pull it so that you can get at least in neutral. If you can't even move it then, the transmission's shot, and you're going to have to take it apart and rebuild it. They do break when they're that old. But a lot of times, the linkage is stick. If you can manually get it going to neutral, then check all your shifter linkage. Something's probably broken their bushings, or it's rusted up, or something like that. They do have a lot of fixable, adjustable stuff on those old ones compared to the new ones that generally, when they get stuck in gear, they're shot. Assad Ezzer says, Scotty, thanks for all your great content and expertise. Sharon, what do you think about Renault and Peugeot cars? Renault and Peugeot pulled out of the United States decades ago. I used to work on them when I was a middle-aged mechanic. I had customers with them, and they were okay cars, but you couldn't get parts for them in the United States, and most people didn't know how to work on them, so that's one of the reasons they pulled out of the United States. Now, Renault is one of the largest companies in the world. Now, they keep buying things. They own Nissan. They're buying other companies. I got back from England last year. They drive them, and they get hundreds of thousands of miles to the people that I talk to, so if you live in Europe, might not be a bad idea, but in the United States, no. <laughs> They're too hard to get parts for, and mechanics don't know how to work on the things. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.